Thank you, boys and girls. I'd like to introduce to you now Mr. Robert Davis, Recreation Director from West Narn Township. Bob? Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, when Mrs. May called and asked me to say a few words here, I started to think to myself what would be appropriate for the dedication of a gymnasium. Being a, <coughs> excuse me, being a former physical education teacher, I can appreciate a beautiful, what a beautiful facility like this can mean, not only to a school, but also to the community as a whole. We at West Norton Township Parks and Recreation Department very much appreciate the privilege of using the facilities of the Norristown Area School District. What a lot of you don't realize is that there are many schools around the country, especially in Sunbelt states, where gymnasiums are a rarity, especially in elementary schools. I've taught a few of them down here, and it's not a, it's not a real easy thing to do. Uh, you should feel very lucky to have such a fine facility at your disposal. I have a great many memories of this old gymnasium here at Marshall Street, which we used for, I guess, the first 18 years I was here with the Recreation Department in West Norton Township. I can remember Steve Bono, who's currently the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, being dragged through that door right there by his father, Bill, because he didn't want to play in a basketball program. Uh, also, most of you don't know who Aldous Bersons is. Aldous Bersons uh, lived in West Norton Township until he was 11 years old. He used to come into this gymnasium every Tuesday night with his mother and sit on the stage and just work with volleyball for years and years and years. During the 1980 Olympic Games, the United States won the gold medal, and Aldous Bersons was the captain of that team. Uh, it's Bob Butera who at the time was a state representative, canceling a campaign speech when he was running for governor out in Pittsburgh and coming back here to coach a Betty basketball game. Of course, he lost the election. That shows how smart he was, but he was very, very loyal to the program. Uh, it's Blaine McAllister, who's now a very successful member of the PGA Tour, leaving a Betty basketball game here. I think he was eight years old. And going down, it was a halftime, he went down to the store, which was Fusco's at the time, down at Forest Avenue, to get a soda. And they still hadn't played the second half. And his mother's looking for him and looking for him. Finally, she discovers he's gone. She heads down Marshall Street, and she beat him every inch of the way from, <laughs> from Fusco's store back here. And he finally got to play the fourth quarter. It's Darren Queen, and who I know a lot of you people connected with the school district are very, very familiar with. Darren Queenan came to us, I guess he was eight years old, he had never played any basketball before. His mother brought him in. He had a problem with which basket to shoot at. Now here's a kid who went to Lehigh University, so he's very, very intelligent. And later became the third leading scorer in NCAA history, which is unfathomable. It's, it's, it's a great feat for a kid, for a local kid. He would grab the rebound, and regardless of what basket he was facing, either that one or that one, just shoot it back in. So <laughs> most of the time, the score was pretty uh, even because he was the best player in the list. <laughs> and I guess no talk about athletics in Norristown would be complete without a Tom Lasorda story. Tom Lasorda at the time was the coach of the Albuquerque Dodgers. They were a triple A team. And of course, he's presently the manager of the L.A. Dodgers. He, his nephew, Harry, played here when he was a young boy in this gym. And we had a game on Friday night, and into the gym comes Tom Lasorda. And he was just as blustery then as he is today. He was all full of himself, and he starts in on the referee, who at the time was my boss, Bill Denner, right? So I couldn't say anything to him, so finally Bill Denner had enough, and he heads over to Lasorda, and he hands him the whistle. He said, here, you do it. So without even missing a beat, Lasorda stands up and he referees the rest of the game. The game's over and he turns around and he announces to all the parents here, that wasn't that a lot better. <laughs> I thank you for having me here today. 
Hopefully your new building will continue to provide memories for all of us. Thank you very much. I have a plaque here, which I hope you'll hang in the hallways here. And it reads, West Norton Township Parks and Recreation Department, November 19, 1991, presented to Marshall Street School. Thanks for your interest, dedication, and cooperation. Congratulations on your new facility. Thank you very much, Bob. I accept this on behalf of the school and the school district. I appreciate it very much. What a nice surprise. We certainly will hang it in the hall. Uh, Mr. Bednar, would you have your concert choir please sing the next two songs for us? Thank you.
That was beautiful, boys and girls, and we will take your advice. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce to you now Mr. Jay Glau, who is from the um, architect firm of Dice Road and Wolf, and he will make the presentation of the building addition. So I would like him to be on one side and Mr. Rader and Dr. Holton to be on the other side of the plaque. Good morning. It's a real pleasure to be here, and I guess uh, this is, I guess, the highlight of all architects' careers to be able to dedicate a building, see a school being used by the teachers, the parents, the students, and the public. I'm very fortunate this morning to be able to represent a staff of, and consultants and people who work on the building of over 50 people. These things just don't happen. You don't get an idea one night, throw it up on the back of an envelope, and build it the next day. These 50 people worked about a year to draw what you're in. And they include landscape architects, structural engineers, architects, interior designers, plan con people who go to Harrisburg and process the paperwork required, mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers so the systems all work in the building properly, the uh, code, code specialists, people investigate building codes. Uh, all these people are back in my office and back in my consultant's office working very hard this morning and I get all the fun here to, to see you people and I'm very glad to be here. I would also like to re really uh, congratulate all you, and especially the custodial staff. The building is magnificently kept. I think you'll all agree that you're very fortunate. And <laughs> as an aside, we're doing work in other buildings in your district, and as a district, you do a magnificent job of maintaining your buildings. Of course, as an architect, buildings are special to me and yeah, maybe more than they should be. Uh, it's good to keep everything in balance because really people and education is what counts. But my, my piece of the pie is to keep an eye on the buildings. You do a very good job of keeping yours in good shape. It's been a lot of fun on this one, taking what was already a very nice building, but taking care of all the shortcomings, bringing it up to all the, the, the things that we'll be needing for the year 2000 now. It's been a wonderful program, and we've really enjoyed the process. Uh, so I don't forget it, Dave Hurst, would you please stand? He is from Schiller and Hurst, the, one of the consultants that is here today, did all the mechanical, electrical, plumbing. <laughs> I think what I'd like to do this time is unveil the dedication plaque so that henceforth from this moment we'll have uh, kind of a symbol to mark the, the changing of the building from its former building to the present one that you're in. Could I please have you gentlemen come forward? <laughs> On behalf of Dice Road Wolf Architects, the contractors, and the design team, I would like to present this plaque to the Norristown Area School District. Thank you, Mr. Rayner. We're going to 
to reminisce a little bit, and I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Wilford Booker, who was president of the school board, West Narton School Board, when Marshall Street School was built in 1956-57. Mr. Booker.
these were independent school districts. West Norton had their own school board. East Norton had their own school board. Norristown had their own school board. That's the way it was all over Pennsylvania. <coughs> Up until 31 or 32 years ago when they formed joint chains. So that's when we came down here, walked over the cornfields, decided this was close enough to Stewart, and the Burnside School was far enough to the other side, and there was nothing, nothing out in Pennsylvania. So this is where we decided to put the school. And even in those days, we had to go to Harrisburg. <laughs> and with red tape and more red tape, and finally, <coughs> this is where we built the school. And I have never been happier in my life than when I come down here to visit and see the different improvements that have been added over the years. I just, I just feel. Well, I had a lot to do, actually, with the school because for 17 years, I taught at Norristown High School. And the only reason I couldn't run when he formed joint was because I was teaching at Norristown and we were going to join with Norristown and East Norton to form a joint Therefore, I couldn't be my own boss. So I didn't run for school board again, built the building, moved in, and from there on out, other people had to take over. It was a pleasure to be invited to come here today because sometimes as we get older, but then when I look around here, <laughs> I can't believe how many people that are here today I had in school at Norristown High School. <laughs> and several of the teachers I talked with, one of the parents back there. Uh, uh, so it is like old homey for me. And again, children, before I sign off, thank you for being so attentive. I think there's nothing better than to see this happen in our schools today. Thank you. just a minute because when I first was married and moved to West Norton, um, I taught at Burnside School and Bill Booker was president back then. He was on the school board back then and he was one of the people, first people I met here in West Norton. Um, Cliff Rogers is here. I'd like him to stand up. He was a principal here at Marshall Street School for a year when I was on sabbatical. Doris Harris. Mr. Mamarella was principal, and I'm sorry Mr. Mamarella couldn't be with us today. Mr. Ken Long was principal for um, a year, and now he's up at the administration building. He's in Harrisburg today, and he's sorry he couldn't be here with us. And last but not least, we have with us today a lady who's been principal of the Marshall Street School from 1957 until she retired in 1976. And I was privileged to have my children here at the time with Mrs. Schmidt. So Mrs. Schmidt, will you please come up and say a few words and reminisce for us? Well, good morning. Being here at Marshall Street brings back many warm and loving memories. It was a beautiful time of my life to spend here in, these, in this building with many of the people who are still here. As Mr. Booker mentioned, when this building was uh, opened, it was on a desert land, you might say. There were no trees, there was nothing to make it look happy and wanted. But it was a lovely building inside and very clean and has been kept all through those years. I, would, I want to mention Mr. Montgomery as the first custodian here 
who took such pride in keeping this building in wonderful condition. I was the first principal here. We had, uh, we were under the Montgomery County uh, Board of Education, if you would call it that, at that time. And in districts such as this, a supervising principal was the superintendent. And then uh, I was the principal uh, and curriculum supervisor of both Burnside and Marshall Street School. So it was a wonderful experience to begin with what was essentially a new school. We had a lot of new teachers <coughs> who were eager to do the best for the children, and then we had some experienced teachers who were there to keep the balance. So it was a, a very, very nice setup. We were especially interested in developing creativity in the children, having them write poetry. We had an original poetry contest. We had um, recited poetry. Mrs. Place received a medal from Freedom's Foundation for her choral reading. And so there was a great deal of that sort of thing going on, poetry being written in the classrooms. And most of all, we felt that we wanted the children to know where they stood in the school so that they would be happy and be able to function to the best of their ability. At that time, this school was just along the front. There were 12 classrooms in the kindergarten at the end with very, very small offices. And I really was offended when you talked about this old gymnasium. Because to me, it's still the gymnasium that it was when I came here the first time. There were many, many, many things going on in this one room, as you can imagine. We had plays on the stage, we had physical education, we had cafeteria, and they all went on in all these little, that one small space. But they went on and the teachers did a beautiful job with them. Then, as time went on, about 10 years later, as the population began to grow, the, we were then with uh, the reorganization, and it was decided that since we had 16 beautiful acres, that this was the place to enlarge the school. And so they took off both ends, and it became a much larger school. At one time, we had 860 children here, which is quite cute. We, um, we were limited in our space as far as this gymnasium, because it still was everything. And so I'm glad to hear that you have a really nice gymnasium now, where you could do many more of the things that you would be wanting to do. It was my pleasure to work with many wonderful teachers some of whom are here today. I always felt that our teachers were especially were special people. I remember one principal saying to me, well, Noreen, my daughter is a teacher in your school, but I've never seen a teacher who worked as hard as she does. And I said, well, all my teachers work that hard. And so that was what we felt the making of our school, that we all worked hard. The children worked hard, the parents worked hard, and we worked hard. And as far as I can see, Mrs. Main, you're still working hard. <laughs> Thank you. This draws our program to a conclusion. I want to thank our speakers up in front for being with us today and for our guests that are here and of course for our parents. Following the singing of America the Beautiful by all of us, as you go out the door you will receive a packet of seeds, forget-me-nots, and it's for the dedication of the New Wing Library Gymnasium, Marshall Street School, November 1991. When we plant the seeds of education, young minds will grow. So please be sure you take one of these on the way out. And we're having a reception in the new library, right following the singing of America the Beautiful. And then we'll have a planting of a tree out in the library courtyard by a second grade class. So I hope you'll come down there and participate with that. 
Once again, I thank you all for coming. And now will you please stand for America's Beautiful. Would please leave first. We have to set up now for.